Hey everyone, my name is Nicholas Switzer and I am an IoT Special Solution Architect here at Amazon Web Services. So today we're going to cover AWS IoT Distributed Messaging Patterns. So specifically we're going to cover what a distributed messaging pattern is and how it looks on AWS IoT and how AWS IoT, in addition to other AWS services, can help you with these distributed messaging patterns. So the first thing I want to cover is what is AWS IoT, what are the services that encompass AWS IoT, as well as uh, what they're used for and give you an idea of the entire platform. Then we're going to cover what is distributed messaging, uh, what does that look like, what exactly do we mean by distributed ma messaging, give it a nice definition. And then of course we'll cover AWS IoT distributed messaging patterns, the actual patterns themselves that can be implemented uh, for distributed messaging use cases in IoT solutions. So we have our IoT virtuous cycle. This gives you an idea of all the different AWS IoT services that we offer, uh, as well as how we view them here at AWS. Uh, starting from the device software to connectivity control services up into analytics services, right? So there's a number of AWS services here, uh, but the main one that we're gonna focus on is AWS IoT Core. So AWS IoT Core uh, contains many different services, or I should say microservices, uh, to enable a full-blown managed broker, that is an MQT broker, that enables you to connect, authenticate, authorize, and ingest data from your devices. So it's a full-blown feature, or sort of say full-blown managed service, that allows you to just connect all of your IoT devices um, and acts as our ingestion point uh, to start with our distributed messaging patterns. So let's give distributed messaging a nice definition, right? It is based on the concept of reliable message queuing. This idea that these messages need to be processed in a distributed manner, uh, let's say across different microservices or just you know, asynchronously in general, right? Uh, so they're going to be queued up to be synchronized out to different client applications and potentially other messaging systems as well. So this is a nice definition from the Torah's point on what a distributed messaging uh, system is and what it really you know, means to be distributed messaging. So now we're going to cover what exactly it is uh, an AWS IoT distributed messaging pattern looks like. And we'll specifically cover three different types of patterns. I'm sure there's more, right? I mean, AWS has a number of services that we could use to enable a lot of these different patterns, but these are three common patterns I've seen before and just something you know, I wanted to share with everyone. So the first is to use MQT5 share subscriptions, right? If you're not familiar with uh, MQT5 or the concept of share subscriptions or any of those pieces, uh, it's pretty straightforward, right? It's the idea that whenever I publish out a message to a topic, um, I want that message to only be received by one subscriber to the topic. And that's enabled through shared subscriptions. So you can see through the diagram itself, uh, the publisher just publishes to a regular MQT topic, just like it would you know, anything else, right? Any other IoT device publishing on MQT topic. But the subscribers actually all specifically subscribe to a shared namespace. Uh, that means that they're actually you know, a part of the shared subscription and they will only, the, only one client will actually receive a message from the shared subscription itself, right? So it's not like all clients are gonna receive a copy of the message, only one of them will get it and process it. So now we'll go ahead and dive into a demo just to see what that looks like from the VS Code, as well as the connection to IoT Core to enable this and what all these pieces look like uh, when it's fully set up. Okay, so for this demo, I'm gonna go over MQTT5 shared subscriptions using these two demo scripts that I wrote. Uh, one's called subdemo, one is called pubdemo. I'll run pubdemo with the different publisher models and subdemo for the different subscriber models. So for this model, it'll be all around MQTT5 shared subscriptions. And what you'll see is uh, I have three things registered in AWS IoT Core. I'm publishing using one AWS IoT thing and publishing specifically to a shared subscription. Uh, the publisher has no idea that it's using a shared subscription. It's just publishing it to a topic like it would uh, for any other MQTTT uh, use case. And then the subscribers are all subscribed to a very specific shared topic, right? A, an actual uh, shared namespace. And you'll see that as messages come through, each one of the subscribers will only receive one individual message. 
uh, won't actually receive a each subscriber won't receive its own copy of the message or anything like that. So first, I'll start publishing messages. Publishing messages. The topic hospital zero one producer zero one publisher IoT thing is my IoT uh, thing which is an IoT core. You can see my message count four five six seven eight nine. And I'll subscribe, and you can see I'm using the shared namespace, dog sign share, consumer. It's the same topic it's publishing to on this side. And you can see I'm receiving every single one of the messages as they come through. 22, 23, 24, 25, you know, as they're pumping through, it's this subscriber is receiving everything. Now, if I start a second subscriber on the same share topic, it's the same share as the namespace we used before, you'll see each one of them is almost like a round robin effect, right? And that's why the message count is off here. You'll get 38. 39 over here, 40, 41, 44, 45. It's going back and forth, and it's allowing me to send messages up to one topic and having two clients pull down uh, its own individual message instead of each one of them getting a copy of every single message that comes through. So that is how MTV5 share subscriptions work uh, for this distributed pattern. Okay, so that was our demo on using MQTT5 shared subscriptions. So some of the pros and cons for using this approach as a distributed messaging pattern. So the pro is there's MQTT support right out of the box with IoT Core, right? So if your clients are already using MQTT, you don't have to really change anything from the side of uh, the client. So it's out of the box support for shared subscriptions, right? And IoT Core, right? As long as it's a region and instance supporting IoT Core, you have access to MQTT5. It's SDK agnostic. Uh, what I mean by that is you don't have to use AWS IoT SDKs. You can use uh, Paho, Mosquito, an open source MQTT client if you want to actually subscribe and connect to IoT Core and take advantage of these features of MQTT 5 share subscriptions. We do recommend that you use AWS IoT SDKs, but it's, it's not 100% necessary, right? And all this works off a of PubSub model. So if you need a model where you need that uh, real-time notification system and you're a big fan of published subscribers, this definitely enables it right out of the box. So some of this, the cons, uh, there are subscriber limitations, so the number of subscribers that can exist inside of a shared namespace has a limit on it, right? So you have to watch that. It is lower throughput, and but what I mean by lower throughput is on the input side as well as the output side, there is constraints on the number of messages that can flow per account per second. So you have to just make sure you watch uh, how many messages you to be publishing out, right? So. There's no message order as well, just because this is MQTT. So if you needed a FIFO on the other side or LIFO or any type of queue like that, uh, that's not gonna work with MQTT5 shared subscriptions. And there's also varying message persistence on how long the message essentially exists in IoT Core. Something just to watch out for and just make sure you're aware of just you know you trying to use it as a queuing mechanism. So the next pattern is to use Amazon SQS. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward flow, right? Your IoT devices connect over MQTT, or you essentially could use HTTPS as well, uh, to IoT Core. Data then flows from IoT Core to using an I, uh, AWS IoT rule to Amazon SQS, or the Simple Queue Service. Messages are then queued inside of uh, an actual queue itself in the service, and then those messages in that queue can be read off using a Lambda or a local process or really just any process that can access the queue itself, right? And that's the idea of it is you're able to actually queue up everything asynchronously and then process messages either at a certain time, batch, or as they come in. So now we'll go over a demo of what this looks like uh, from VS Code and we'll publish messages out to IoT Core and read them through an SQS key. Okay, so for this demonstration, we're just going to go over how to uh, pass messages through IoT Core to an SQS queue and then receive those messages from the SQS queue. So we're using the same sub demo and pub demo scripts as before. The only difference is we're going to be uh, receiving messages from an SQS queue versus directly from IoT Core or MQTT. So, to get started. I'll go ahead and start shooting off messages similar to what I was doing before. The big difference is um, I'm sending out to a producer zero one slash SQS topic, right? And that's the topic that's actually being uh, read by an IoT rule uh, that'll take these messages and pump them into an Amazon SQS queue. So I'll go through and pull out my queue using the sub demo script. 
Uh, I pull the queue, I start reading off messages specifically from the queue. You can see that I am going through, I'm polling, I'm pulling back these messages. They're not in order just because I have to go through and pull them back uh, as quickly as I can. Uh, as well as you know, on the MQTT side, do I have decor? That's not going to have messages come in in an orderly fashion, so something to keep in mind. But this is the pattern. I'm going through publishing messages out to IFT Core, uh, where I've set up an IFT rule that'll send messages into Amazon SQS. I can easily read through there, uh, read them back through uh, a client similar to this fashion, or through a Lambda function, or anything else. Okay, so that was our demo on using Amazon SQS uh, as a queue for a distributed messaging pattern with AWS IoT. So some of the pros and cons with this approach, right? Uh, the pro is there's no subscriber limits. So standard queues in Amazon SQS support a nearly unlimited number of API calls per second. That includes re receiving messages, right? So uh, FIFO queues, especially, we have a quota of 300 transactions per second per API action, and that includes receive messages. So the subscriber limits for that piece for actually polling and pulling back messages is extremely high. Uh, it supports multi-account, so the ability to actually take messages into IoT Core in one account and then pump them into a queue in a completely different account is available with this option. There's high throughput, right? Like I just talked about the un nearly unlimited number of API calls per second per API action that can happen, right? Especially for the receive message side. Uh, there's also message retention, right? So Amazon SQS has a 14 day message retention, which is great if you have a number of messages that need to be retained for at least two weeks or for days on end, right? And you're not entirely sure when they get processed, but you need to have a decent number of days for that message retention. So some of the cons, uh, there's no MQTT support for subscriber. This is all based off an HTTPS call, right? I mean, just an HTTPS API. Uh, there are some other options around, you know, different protocols that can access to this, but there is no MQTT for Amazon SQS. There's no queue level authorization. So what I mean here is when you go into AWS IoT Core um, in MQTT, you have thing policies. These thing policies allow you to uh, restrict access down to the topic level, right? So you can really get some fine grain uh, authorization access into IoT Core, but with Amazon SQS from the subscriber side, it's just at the queue level, right? You're not able to go down even deeper than that from an authorization perspective. There is increased cost complexity just because you have to set up IoT rules, a complete new service, which is Amazon SQS, right? So I mean, it will take a little more setup to actually get this entire uh, pattern essentially implemented. And then of course, this is a message polling pattern, right? So message polling can lead to latency and non real time message processing. As you pull back messages, either in batches or with multiple calls to try and get as many messages as you can, right? It's definitely not a pub sub model. So the next pattern we're going to talk about is Amazon Kinesis, right? So we're going to use uh, a device that connects over MQTT to AWS IoT Core. And in a similar fashion, we take data that goes into IoT Core uh, using an IoT rule, and we pump it into Amazon Kinesis data stream, specifically into an actual data stream. So there is another pattern where you can avoid using IoT rules. And if you need your devices to bypass IoT Core, uh, maybe the message throughput is a little bit too high, right, for going directly through IoT Core to rule so Kinesis data stream, and you just need to go directly to data streams. You can use what's called the uh, AWS IoT Core credential provider to actually get a set of temporary credentials that allow you to connect directly to the kine uh, Kinesis data stream, right, and pump messages and data through there for that real nice high throughput effect. We're not going to talk about that pattern today, but just wanted to note that as a separate option. So for this pattern, you specifically flow data into Amazon uh, Kinesis data streams, and then from there, you can take a local process, a Lambda, anything like that, uh, and scale out and process all of that data as it's being flowed into the stream itself. So now we're going to go over a demo. Okay, so this is our final demo where we're going to show how to take messages from IoT Core and distribute them out to an Amazon Kinesis data stream and read back those messages from the Kinesis data stream uh, using the same sub demo and pub demo scripts we've used for the previous two demos. So the first thing I'll start to do is send off messages specifically to a Kinesis topic, right? This is on T-Base, 
I'm publishing out messages to this producer zero one in Nisa's topic. And these messages are getting picked up by an IoT rule that's listening on this topic and passing those messages over to a Kinesis data stream. So from here, I can read all of that data that's being passed into the Kinesis data stream just using either uh, an Lambda function or a local process, like what I'm doing here. Uh, what you notice is my script is a little bit slow just due to the fact that I have to go through and individually read from each shard itself. So there are multiple shards in this Kinesis data stream that I'm reading these messages and data from. So my script isn't super fast here to do that because I'm just kind of doing this all um, non-parallel, right? Very much one after the other. So I'm only picking up a certain amount of data and information, but you can see this is still based off a uh, polling model where I'm reaching out to the Kinesis data stream, pulling those messages back in, checking each one of the individual shards. Um, and kind of going through and pulling those messages down in, in that fashion, that manner, and not in a pub sub model. So that's the demo for using a Kinesis data stream. And again, we publish data from uh, our local script over MQTT into uh, AWS IoT Core. And then we have an AWS IoT rule that's listening on this Hospital 01, Producer 01 Kinesis topic that then takes that data and flows it into uh, Kinesis data stream. Okay, so that was our demonstration on using Amazon Kinesis uh, with AWS IoT as a distributed messaging pattern. So for this approach, there are some pros and cons, right? Uh, for the pros, there are really no subscriber limits, right? So a shard in a Kinesis data stream um, allows up to two megabytes per second for reads. So as long as you're not crossing that two megabyte boundary, uh, you're not you know, having to worry about any type of subscription or client facing limits like that. Uh, there's the enhanced fan out pattern specifically for Kinesis data stream consumers. Uh, it provides logical two megabyte per second throughput pipes between consumers and shards. This is a feature that's directly a part of Kinesis data streams and really helps with that uh, consuming side. So there's also message retention, right? Uh, so a data stream records uh, for up to 24 hours by default, but it can go all the way up to 365 days. So it's pretty high level message retention that essentially exists there. Uh, then of course, there's high throughput on the output side as you write messages directly from IoT Core to Kinesis. And it's also a good option for if you want to bypass IoT Core, uh, use something like IoT Credential Provider, get some credentials on the device and then go directly to Kinesis. It gives you that nice throughput option as well if you wanted to um, essentially you know, follow that pattern as well. To the cons, uh, there's no MQTT support for subscribers. Uh, Kinesis is very much based around an HTTPS RESTful API call, right? So no MQTT there. There's no shard level authorization. So you can't limit down uh, clients to the specific shards essentially that can read messages from. So unlike an MQTT topic inside of IoT Core that you can limit down access to uh, at a much more granular level. There is increased cost complexity just because you have to set up IoT rules. Um, another, com another complete service, which is Amazon Kinesis Data Streams. And this entire aspect works off a polling model, right? So you're polling out to the data stream itself to pull messages back from the shards. Uh, it's not a pub sub model. So that real time effects may not 100% be there just because you do have to pull out to uh, the data stream to receive your messages. So, and of course, that's all of our ABUS IoT distributed messaging patterns. Now, I'm sure there's different alternate ways uh, to manipulate these patterns, right, or other ways in order to actually build out a, a distributed messaging pattern with ABUS IoT, but these are three common ones. So I'm definitely glad that you were here to go with me through these patterns, go through the demonstrations and everything else. And of course, if you have any questions or if you need anything ABUS IoT related, distributed messaging pattern related, uh, just feel free to reach out to me at either my email or connect with me on LinkedIn. Thank you.